Welcome to the Open Mic Podcast Show with Mike Midgley. Hey and welcome to the Open Mic Podcast. On today's episode I'm excited to be covering a topic that may sound unfamiliar to you today, uh, but should be taken equally as serious as what you do in your other mainstream marketing terms. And that is the topical subject that we've really got sort of involved in, um, you know, over the last 12 months or so, and that's a topic called convergent marketing. Today's influencer guest is uh, Maximiliano Brigada of Convergent Marketing Specialist at Ada on Cloud. And Max is based out of Barcelona, Spain, but originally from Italy, uh, Max. So welcome to the show, and we appreciate you being on today. Thank you very much, Mike. It's a pleasure for me to, to be on the show with you. Yeah, so tell us whereabouts you originated from originally, because I know you're based out of Barcelona, sunny Barcelona at the moment, but originally from Italy. Um, which part of the country? Uh, I'm originally from the south of Italy. Yeah. Uh, from a very beautiful place, really a rural place uh, called Manfredonia. Oh. It is uh, a, a summer place. Nice beaches, lovely, play, lovely places. You're making me jealous already. <laughs> it's too small, too small to make business. That's why 18 years old, I decided to, to quit and uh, to, move, uh, to move forward. No, absolutely. Well, it's great to see you. And we're in for a real treat today. And as I say, it's, it's not something that you may be aware of, Convergent Marketing, but we're going to get into the bones of that. I'm going to show you the power of how that sort of runs. Um, you know, for us here as an agency, you know, we've recently had the pleasure of partnering with Max and Ada, um, you know, with our own inbound HubSpot agency. Um, and we've been so impressed with what Max and his team has been uh, developing. Um, we've actually become a partner uh, with them, and uh, we're currently going through all their qualifications, like we did with HubSpot and inbound, uh, to really sort of understand this, because I've not been as excited um, about the power of what you're going to learn around convergent marketing for a long, long time. You know, for all the listeners out there, you know, there is all oh, there's this new marketing trick and there's this new marketing strategy. Usually they're over packaged and re rebundled of, you know, all the stuff. But this is very, very, very relevant. There's a lot of new stuff in here. And as I say, for us to sort of get involved, um, you know, that hopefully, you know, should sort of give you the confidence that um, this is serious stuff and it's going to be very, very powerful. So if you're looking to improve engagement with your prospects, you're looking to get them excited and get them frothing at the mouth, ready to engage with your brand, then ultimately convergent marketing is going to be something that you want to be getting involved with. Um, before we get started, let's learn a little bit more about Max. You can connect with Max uh, on LinkedIn. We'll put the show notes below. Uh, although if you want to head over and learn a little bit more about uh, convergent marketing, head over to adaoncloud.com. That's A D A. O-N-C-L-O-U-D.com, Ada on cloud.com. And again, for those of you who are listening to the show, we'll put this in the app and in the show notes uh, from there. So Max, uh, convergent marketing, we'll get to in a moment or two, but I'm more interested in this bio and this background. Obviously, I've known you for about 18 months or so now. Um, Max is a highly, highly experienced businessman, very, very passionate about marketing and digital strategies. He does all the coaching, sales, training, speaking. Uh, Max also speaks four languages, which I'm wildly jealous about because me, for as a person, as a passion for language, Max, I had a go at Spanish uh, about 20 years ago, and I, I've got reasonably decent there. Uh, I'm currently hacking around French, um, but uh, stalled a little bit there, so... Obviously, four languages, native tongue, plus three others, of course. Tell us a little bit more about what it takes to sort of, you know, learn those languages uh, and how you've built and you use those in your business career at the moment. Yeah, thanks very much, Mike, for the introduction. Oh, well, four languages has not been a joke. I mean, <laughs> I, I refer to that. It's, it's like creating a business. It's yeah. not easy. You have to work hard. You have to be passionate about something. You have to believe you're going to do one day. And despite or whatever happens, you have to just keep it on. And that's what happened. I mean, I've been curious since a uh, uh, very early stage of my life. Uh, in fact, I studied uh, my uh, elementary school uh, 60 kilometers away from my hometown. Wow. Uh, I reckon the school in my hometown was too small. Uh, and that I was only 12, but it was still in Italy. Uh, then I, I, I had a chance to, to, to try. I wanted to discover the uh, first country I went in was France. Yeah. And uh, I studied some French school, but then, you know, was, uh, was, 
was not enough. So I went to France. My first job was uh, being a, a wash up in a kitchen. Wow. It's the only place you can uh, stay, speak a language. So that was, was funny. Um, and uh, so I done during the summer, during my the school breaks, then I went back to, to, to school in Italy. Uh, the reason, uh, if you ask me the reason, uh, one of the reasons I, I speak for, and I'm, I'm learning the fifth one, which is supposed to be, because I love talking. <laughs> so that is the base. I love talking. So I understood soon that to talk, I had to speak different languages. Yeah. Then I, I, I made a huge choice on, uh, uh, on when I was 18, I came to England. Uh, I came and study European business uh, in Cambridge. So that was my English come from. Uh, and uh, then I went to USA, back in France, uh, from the USA. And then finally, uh, I came here in Barcelona, where I stay now, I stay now 17 years ago, yeah. uh, because I wanted to do part of my Erasmus, being a European business student, you need to do uh, here abroad. So I split these two years, six months in Paris, and I had to choose a, a Spanish. So when I came to Barcelona, I fell in love with this city, and uh, 17 years ago, I'm still here. So, oh, and of course, the fourth language is Italian, but that is a gift given by my mom. <laughs> <laughs> and learning Portuguese as well. It's, it's a, it's, that's obviously similar to sort of Spanish, I'm assuming. Is it, there's a lot of sort of similarities there, or is, are you finding it sort of totally different? Yeah, it's a Latin, Latin-based language. So, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's very strange because when you know Italian, French, Spanish, Catalan, because you know, yeah. speak Catalan, uh, is a mixture of, uh, of, uh, of different languages. And then the good thing is when you learn languages is that, you know, you don't really learn the words, you learn the sound of it. Uh, you know, the sounds make familiar and, you know, you, you just grab that in your head somewhere, I don't know where. <laughs> It stays there, and uh, yeah, it's 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 to me. It's like a joke. It's like a, a game. Yeah, it's like creating a business, starting from nothing, uh, dif- difficulties, but then you know, working hard, working, you're gonna make it. Amazing, amazing. Well, good luck with the Portuguese as well, and I'm envious as well. Um, so for a little bit more uh, for the listeners, Max has founded and held CEO positions of, of several marketing agencies, and he's the co-founder of the Digital Boxinator on Cloud. Um, and that sort of software platform has built this methodology uh, of what we call today convergent marketing. And it's really the first all-in-one platform for mobile marketing solutions, um, critically powered by artificial intelligence. Now, if you're thinking about what you're doing right now, you probably listen to this podcast on a mobile device. You may be watching it on the blog, but you may be scrolling your device. I was speaking to a guy called Dennis Yu, uh, the Facebook expert um, out of North America, um, a few uh, weeks ago. And Dennis saying is that apparently our fingers scroll over 100 meters a day on a smartphone. So you can see how impactful it is. What do we do at restaurants? Rightly or wrongly, we pick up a phone in between courses. What do we do in between teeth? TV shows while the adverts on, we pick up as mobile phone. So the reality is, if you ain't got the power of this yet, as always, I'm going to be direct and straight with you. Where are your customers' eyeballs? Yeah, they're not as much on the screen these days. They're not as much, well, definitely not as much on billboards. They just become passive. You know, where they're at, it's in the handset. That's where your customers' eyeballs are, and that's where convergent marketing meets them. Um, so, Max, before we get started a bit more, tell us a bit more about that journey. Uh, in business, obviously, being involved with marketing agencies, had C- C-suite level sort of roles there. And what I'm really keen to understand and what I'd love the uh, listeners to understand is how convergent marketing came around uh, with Ada on cloud and the digital box. T- share a little bit more with us. Yeah. I mean, uh, uh, first, let me define myself as a romantic marketeer. <laughs> uh, so <laughs> that would make sense uh, during all this uh, explanation why we, 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 are, we landed to the world convergent marketing, why we call it convergent marketing. Uh, I always follow, um, I always follow marketing. I mean, uh, I, I think marketing is the base of uh, even a personal life because we all do marketing. Today I'm doing marketing. I put my white beautiful hair. <laughs> uh, you know, when we go, when we are young, we go nightclub, uh, we're doing marketing ourselves. We, we dress in a sort of way uh, because we want to, we want to, you know, we want to impress uh, the other part, which in that case would be the consumer, no? Yeah. Uh, during my 
experience of my conference, I always use this uh, personal life, uh, how we use marketing in a personal life. And, uh, you know, we do everything to that the other part, which is the consumer in this case, would love it. So from that in mind, uh, I, I had a career that since, you know, came out for the university, uh, I did a, a major is European business. My minor in England was marketing. I loved it. To me, it's, it makes sense. You know, it's just something that makes sense. You want to get something, just get close to this person that uh, you want to you wanna introduce your idea. Make sure that that person knows as much as, you, as they can about your product and just, you know, feed them. Because if you feed them at some stage, they're going to buy you. Yeah. So that is the idea of the, of the marketing. Whatever it's, uh, it's called, you know, uh, sensitive marketing, inbound marketing, conversion marketing, the base is, uh, is the same. Yeah. So, you know, with that in mind, uh, I've been, I've been uh, trained myself, I've been reading, I've been working uh, on the marketing scenario. I've been in USA because I was really interesting. Uh, I knew the marketing came from there and, uh, yeah. and uh, well, and the platform for marketing came from there. In fact, in 2004, uh, I was in San Francisco. It was the year the guys from HubSpot uh, yeah. came out. I love those guys because they, they, they've been so clever. Yeah. You know, they created, a, uh, as you said, uh, they didn't create a product to sell. They first created an idea. They made sure that the idea was, uh, you know, uh, was, uh, was, uh, was understandable to the market. And yeah. then back in 2007, they created the software. Yeah. So okay, now you want to be specialized in bad marketing. We told you what to do. Now this is the software to do it. Yeah, you got it. Uh, you know, as uh, Steve Jobs said, you, you cannot preview what happened. You have to get your, you know, points back, you know, uh, leading points. You know, you have to connect points. Yeah. And, you know, uh, I done, uh, I've created agency, a lot of, three agencies of marketing, uh, always uh, believing that the consumer is the main uh, concern we should all have. Yeah, you know, keep focused on it. Yeah, we have to focus on the consumer. I mean, Mike, me and you, uh, despite all we have in common, we have one shoe in common. We are both consumers. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody's a buyer. And I think that's where a lot of B2B people go wrong. There's a great saying out there. And I mean, I'm not quite sure of the original source. It may be Ryan Dice. Um, but, you know, we talk about B2C, B2B, but ultimately he calls it H2H, which is human to human. You know, people buy from people that they know, like, and trust, don't they? And, you know, ultimately, um, you know, even in the business world, um, there's still a human being making that transaction with either a company or a, another consumer. So, you know, I think, you know, if you're listening out there as a business owner and, you know, just just take a step out. I'm not saying pull over the car and turn off. You just take a time out. Press pause on this podcast. Do whatever you're going to do. And just reflect, are you actually focused on that? Are you actually focused on you know, what you do or how you help? Because sometimes if you lose the sight and the fact of, you know, we, we're not serving customers. Um, because, you know, my old non-exec, Bill McGraw, you know, the, the regular listeners to the show will hear this a lot. You know, Bill always used to say to me, Mike, customers make paydays happen. You know, and, and, and ultimately, whether it's H to H, paydays happen, uh, whatever it may be. And there's an ex Infusionsoft guy uh, that I follow and a called, guy called Jeff Musk. And his son's just, know. yeah, Jeff, and, and, and Jeff's just opened his new consulting, Musk uh, Consulting, and he, he posts out like a, a, a subsection of his son's paycheck. And his son's gone and got like a, an entry level job at In and Out Burger in the States. And uh, Jeff puts these things out. He loves the In-N-Out Burger brand. And even on their paycheck, it says, this paycheck was made, made possible by the customer. Yeah. And it's like, oh, you know, even on a customer's paycheck, what they're doing is they're not just telling their employees that the customer's happened. When they pick their, because they're still getting paid with a, a manual paycheck, um, you know, from that side, but printed on it, this paycheck is made possible by the customer. I absolutely love that methodology because it's that culture of breeding into your employees. And I think that's ultimately what I believe in, and I know you believe in that heavily as well, Max. In fact, it's, it's, it's great to say that because uh, 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 I'm one of those guys that in a conference that kills the B2B, B2C. Yeah. And I put the same example, Luke, me and you, we are two businessmen, and we are, two B, we are B2B, by fact, it's Mike and Massimiliano talking, and they decided that uh, we're both going to become a partner. And uh, coming back to you, the consumer for me has always been uh, very centric in everything I've done. 
that I, I won't walk you through the office now <laughs> because there's not a time to do so. Uh, whenever you with your camera with a send your photo, I have a huge poster here that said, in this company, you have no CEO, no CTO that would ever, ever, uh, you know, sack a, an employer. The only one can know sack us is a consumer. Yeah. You're going to buy someone else a wheel down. Yeah. Wheel down. So that, we have to keep that in mind. I mean, uh, cons we are consumers. We need to understand them. So why, from that point of view, we became to converge marketing? And this is another thing. I mean, I, I'm very analytic. And I know you are, so we, we are on the same page here. I'm very analytic. I read a lot. I, I look at metrics, you know. Uh, and uh, once I read a, I read a, a statement by Edward, Edward Dewey, which is a, a mathematics, and they said, a man without data is another man giving an opinion. <laughs> I love it, that sentence. I start all my conference with that sentence. You know, in our job, in our position, we talk about marketing, we should take off what we, really, what we think. Well, I think, no, you cannot think, you have to read. You have to analyze trends, you have to understand what the market is, you have to understand what consumer does, and in order to you know, reach the, the good, the right target, you just need to see the trends. Yeah. So with that in mind, when we created the, the platform, was uh, back in 2014, uh, you know, we, had, we were a marketing agencies. Uh, we, had, we were using something like 12 softwares, more or less. I can make some names, MailChimp, uh, uh, HotSuite, uh, whatever. You know, all those guys that we all know, beautiful software, fantastic. They all do their job good, but they have a problem. They all separate it. They don't talk to each other. You have to know a lot of user the passwords. Scaling that to my team was just a nightmare. Um, and then we just thought, hey, you know, why no one is, is, is getting all them together? We're bringing it together. Yeah, but the, the good thing we did, make it easy. Yeah. Because it's understandable. I mean, Medship is a great tool I used for many years. But the thing is, they're specializing on emailing. So every time they adding new features, making complex to use. Not complicated, complex. Yeah. So uh, do I need all that features? No. So what we did, we, we put it all together. We said, let's put the 12 software most used on the market, put it all together, make it easy to use, take off all the things. We don't need it to put it in because, you know, we want to do email. That's easy to do email, easy, easy creation. And now it was a 2014 uh, reading trends. We, 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 made, we saw that the access to internet uh, through mobile was growing. Yeah. Year by year. So we decided, hey guys, that is the moment. We need to be, you know, we need to be the first, we need to be pioneer in something. Don't create something that we're gonna be in the red ocean. Let's get something that we move to the blue ocean. So yeah. something that does not exist, you know, no roles. You you created the roles. So we, we decided let's go mobile. Let's create a platform that create as a lot of software to create, distribute, and measure, but all about mobile. Yeah. Well, looking back at that 2014, in 2016, November 2016, has been the first month in the history that the access to internet uh, has been higher, higher mobile tablet than the, yeah. than the, than the desktop. Mm -hmm. So that made, you know, all the difference, uh, you know, what we told, not because we are visionary or we are good, just reading data, reading yeah. trends. That's why I'm, I'm asking that you well said, come on, guys. We are all consumer. You know what you do with your tools. You know what you're doing around. You're always looking for something on the mobile. Why are we still keeping not investing in this tool? That's what I don't understand. I, I see, and I echo it all the way, Max. What frustrates me, you know, you'll see this as an ex-agency owner, or well, an agency uh, participant. Um, you know, customers get so nervous about taking the first steps. And, you know, oh, well, you know, I'm not sure. And then, you know, you've sometimes just not literally got to what I call hit them, literally. But you've got to say, look, what are you doing now? What have you got in your hand? What, you know, what are your habits? And, um, you know, if your campaign, and again, I ask the listeners and the people watching this on the video channels, you know, if you are not investing a significant percentage of your budgets into, into marketing efforts that are meeting the customers where they're at, 
then you know, can you imagine how many opportunities? That's like standing at a bus stop, you know, knowing that the bus has already gone, or hoping that one just happens to, to come along. You know, we need a timetable. Max has laid that timetable out for you. And you know, you don't have to believe us on here. You can go online and just go to Google and you can search mobile consumption, mobile usage versus desktop. People like WordStream and, and social media examiner, they're gonna be blastering these figures out all over, which are great publications, by the way. Yeah, these are these are authoritative sort of sources and they're going to show you what that is i think i mean it was about 67 or 70 percent of the, the traffic was mobile or something you know when it, you know from from there and google by the way owns about 97 98 percent of the traffic on mobile so you know ultimately you know if you're still doing mainstream media you're doing desktop marketing. And by the way, there's nothing wrong with that in email marketing, but you've got to move with the times. Digital moves so fast. You know, if you take a day out, you know, you, you know, well, maybe not a day, but if you take a month out of learning digital and keeping up with it, you may have lost three months. You know, you, even if you're in it every day, you're still behind because there's so many different things. And I know I've seen Max do his talks and he speaks and he has a graph out there. And I think you maybe helped me with this, Max. There was about how many, was it about 500 software applications at a certain point in time and then that was like 5,000 software applications. It's yeah, we started in 2011 with 150, 2019, 7,000 marketing softwares. Yeah, wow. So you go from 150 to 7,000 plus in less than eight years or seven years and it's moving even faster than that now. What we did from a podcast um, stats in June 2018, because obviously what we're doing here on podcasting, that's a slightly different um, sort of subject to convergent marketing. But as Max said, we're all sort of, I class this, you hear me say this every show, I class this more as a public service than I do uh, thing, but it's still marketing and services. But in June 2018, Apple recorded over 500,000 podcasts on their, on their channel. In wow. June 2019, that was over 700,000 podcasts. So just in 12 months, that's 200,000 podcasts. It's nearly 40% increase. So, you know, if, you, if you're not in the podcast market, you know, you don't need to be, that's fine. But if you're not in the podcast market and you need to be, then ultimately there's never a better time to do that. So like there was never a better time to get a website in the late 90s, like there was never a better time to get on social media, you know, 2007, 8, 9, when it was early adopter. Same with marketing automation around that time there's never a better time to get focused on mobile because i don't care what you say and i'm happy to open the debate with you if you want to shoot me a message use a hashtag the open mic uh, let's open a debate leave a comment below we'll get that sorted but being mobile 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 it ain't going away it's going to here to stay and it's only going to get better um and ultimately i think that's the message that we, and you know you can see my passion here I, as i said right at the top of the show guys I've not been as excited about something in the digital space for a hell of a long time. But the idea for us was, okay, I am on a mobile, we are on a mobile, we have to be able to create those mobile to mobile experience, frictionless, in order to engage the customer, in order to uh, emotion, get some emotion to them, just to get that click that gives us its contact. Without contact, we bet. You know, whatever you wanna call a marketing, call it. But if the consumer doesn't get involved, doesn't get uh, emotional about some contents, it doesn't click and say, okay, I want to talk to you. You know, this is just theory. Yeah. We don't talk about theory. Yeah. So they create mobile, uh, attractive and emotional mobile contents that with a call to action lead you to another mobile contents that, you know, makes you understand more about the product. And finally, with the use of artificial intelligence, something we do, we love chatting. So you have this uh, uh, conversational uh, agent that will ask you, hey, how you doing, Mike? You, you're good, good. Uh, listen, why are you interested in Oh, I'm interested in this. Good, give me your telephone number. Give me more email. So it's a conversational form. You know, I don't even believe the normal landing page are going gonna, are gonna to stay forever. It's too no. cool. It's like, going, you know, it's like going in a bar, looking at a nice woman, going there without nothing. You drop, hey, give me your number. Huh. Oh, she will tell you, go away. Move away from here. You know, tell her, hey, what's that? what a lovely lady, what are you doing this night? You know, it, it's the same. I always refer the marketing to the marketing we do personal. That we haven't learned is natural. You yeah. talk to people in order to receive something. So the convergent marketing is exactly everything converged today in the smartphone. We know that. Uh, so it, it's not going to be possible to have a, a digital strategy without the mobile as the main media. Because 
is in the hand of everybody, is where we spend most of the time. Uh, it's getting them to the social network because today, 4,000 millions, 4 billions of people every day spend three hours in average on the social network. Again, I came in with some data and with some figures, not with my idea. Yeah. Uh, and it's reality. This, it's reality, isn't it? It's, it's where we are more uh, entertained. We are more willing to receive some information. And then we should use algorithm of in, uh, artificial intelligence to understand how each of these customers is um, is, uh, is engaging with the brand and go and talk to them personally. Yeah. That is the convention marketing. It's just Amazing. some of three normal things, logic things, put in one together. Yeah. The thing here, and for the listeners here, you know, I always sort of stop the podcast and ask you to back up uh, for guests when there's something profound said. What Max has just said there is, um, it is impossible to get a digital strategy right today without including mobile. So if you're in the car now, pull over, get your pad and pen out, write it down. If you're on the blog, write it down. It is impossible. Whatever digital initiatives that you are trying to implement in your business, you don't have a mobile focused initiative as part of that in some format, whether you start small and then eventually expand into something bigger or your market is there, especially if you're in retail consumer products, you know, they're all in the phone and the mobile, but very rarely on the desktop or the laptop. Um, so, you know, that's a major play. And thanks for sharing that with us, Max, because that's a killer statement. You know, don't think digital strategy unless you're going to put a section, small, medium or large of mobile in there, but ultimately it's only going to get bigger time so it's better to get started as soon as possible let, let me add uh, something to to close this matter because it, it's important for us and probably for the for the listeners mm -hmm. they understand that you know in uh, july 2019 gartner came out with uh, uh the magic quadrant on mobile yeah. marketing platform we have been uh, receiving an uh, honor and mention from them because Amazing they analyzed the, the conversion marketing, they understood what is it, and they said, hey guys, this is something to look at. Yeah. So for those who are in USA or uh, England, that they know what Gartner, please yeah. go and read the 2019 Magic Quadrant about Gartner. We are listed, and we are the only European platform, with proud I would say that, uh, present in this study, and you will say what they, what they think about conversion marketing too. So yeah. it's something... Uh, Mike and I, we are, you know, here today try to, to convince you it's something really going on. Mm. Absolutely. And for those listening on the podcast, we'll put that link to the Gartner uh, report, Magic Quadrant report, into the show notes as well, so you can have a look at it. And, you know, for those who are not familiar with Gartner, obviously they're the leading assessment body, um, uh, you know, the, 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 you know the, the, the number one company out there who's going to give you an independent view on something. So we'll put that sh in, uh, link into the show notes. So Max, before we just sort of wrap out on your bio, um, I know you're a curious individual, very professional, you know, highly professional. Um, and, you know, you've led a number of campaigns uh, and marketing sort of um, uh, projects, if that's the right word, uh, for brands such as FC Barcelona, um, Porsche, Mercedes-Benz and Calzadonia, uh, among others. So there's some serious names in there. And what I'd love to learn, and I'm sure the listeners are interested too, is, um, you know, when you're dealing at that level, um, these global brands, uh, you know, not just sort of localized, regionalized or continent-based ones, uh, what did you learn from that? You know, whether that's convergent or just an experience of the entrepreneurs listening, and what did you learn from dealing with these major brands? Is there, is there some sort of some takeaways that you could share? Good and high, it could be great ones. Shall I be politically correct or can <laughs> be? No, be openly honest, be openly honest, because that's what the listeners want. You know, and, and just to sort of set the tone, you know, I've worked with major, major billion dollar pharmaceutical businesses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've worked with the guy with one man in his van and everything in between over my sort of, 27 years or whatever it is. And uh, whilst the big boys are what they are, they're very hard work, they're slow to make decisions, they're like oil tankers in the harbor that have to go out. You have meetings for meetings for meetings just to have a meeting, say. Uh, but not all of them, but a lot of them are like that. So, you know, it's all about honesty. And I think that, you know, I suppose not to precursor this or, or to plant anything in your mind, because I want your exact experiences, Max. But from my point of view, 
Um, if somebody said to me, Mike, do you go after the big players now? No, not as much because it's a longer sales cycle. It's, it's, it, it's so many decisions that I have to get them through. What I want to deal with in my agency is those aggressive, high growth entrepreneurs, you know, in, in luxury leisure, in professional services, in automotive, in golf play, golf centers, in real estate. Those who can make decisions, those who know what they want to do and those who are ready to take action. So that's me. I don't want these enormous oil tankers because, you know, the cost of sale to acquire them and, you know, it is in a, you know the cost of legal to manage them. I find it really, really hard. Or, or maybe I'm just impatient. I don't know. That's maybe a bit of a, a, an open admission. But, maybe that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but, you know, we know we can help people. Um, and sometimes some of the bigger boys, they put unnecessary hurdles in play. And again, if you have that out there, shoot us a message. We'd love to have a laugh and a joke about obstacles, the unnecessary obstacles. Just use the hashtag, the open mic. Let's engage in a conversation with that. But I'd love to know what your experience is, good, bad, and indifferent, the highs and the lows, the biggest mistakes that you've made, the greatest successes. Just share a few of those with us, Mike. Yeah, no, no. I mean, uh, I think everybody else is on this uh, podcast today uh, would agree with both of us. I mean... Yeah. Uh, you, big, big enterprise clients uh, are, is pain in the neck uh, for many people. <laughs> uh, but, you know, you need to have them because it makes you credibility. You use them on your page, on your web page. Yeah. You know, it's like opening, uh, uh, you know, those guys are working with us. But honestly, uh, uh, the enterprise market represents 1% of the overage overall market. So I'm more interested in what happened to the 99% of the rest yeah. of the market. And that's why we, you know, it's the idea why Ada came out. Uh, you know, let's give it, we are the Robin Hood of the big brands like Salesforce, <laughs> Eloqua, that they just for bigger brands and their price, 300,000 uh, euros or pounds or dollars per year. No way. Today, the digital marketing opened the door to everybody else. Even the leaders, me, can do uh, digital marketing. So let's take off from the big, take it to the small. And that's why we are the Robin Hood of the, of the market. <laughs> I love it. But say that. You know, uh, it's funny, you're talking about Mercedes, and uh, I have to tell you this anecdote. Mercedes, I didn't go and find them, but casually, uh, we, I shared the same plane uh, with the marketing director of Mercedes France. And uh, honestly, Mike, I hope you never would have shared a plane with me, because <laughs> I'd never stop talking. <laughs> I don't know if that guy buy, bought it because it was interesting or because just I killed him. I said, <laughs> nowhere to go. <laughs> yeah, shut up, I buy. Go from the life. No, I mean, big, big enterprise. It's, it's harder uh, because it's like Titanic to move. They need a lot of time. Uh, and then, you know, get these people working on the marketing there. And, you know, they leave most of them, they live in a comfort zone. You know, comfort zone is the, is the cancer of any company. Yeah. So they, are, they have a big enterprise company. They work very well. Uh, I know. Now, not say about the car dealers, Mercedes, that have a lot of problems to sell, but you know, I'm talking about the, the corporate one. They live very well, and the brand sells itself. You have to just create you know, enough communication to still stay there, and they are very uh, hard to make them move from where they are. So when I went there, I said, listen, whatever you think, here I can have the president of the republic, I can have you know, uh, I can have anyone in front of me. I believe what I'm saying because I'm not saying from my point of view. I'm saying from the point of view of the consumer who runs a Mercedes has a mobile. Yeah. Okay? It does exactly the same stuff as somebody works uh, a, a McDonald's without yeah. taking respect to people who works at McDonald's, of course. You know, so you needed to go and talk to them where they are. You know, they probably have their phone connected. You do Mercedes Benz connected with the phone. Yeah. So you do something believing that the, the smartphone is, is a key in you know, the communication. Yeah, I mean, Mercedes have the Mercedes Me app, you know. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly what I'm saying. So, uh, you know, pick a brand, is, uh, is, uh, it's funny, it's uh, hard work. Uh, it's needed for a company. Uh, not for the money, whatever, forget about the money because they don't give you money. Uh, they pay you bad, they pay 90 days, whatever. I prefer to have money in 30 days than the 90 or 120. Uh, but it's, it's a bunch of other experience. For example, I'm a football fan. Uh, and when I had a chance to go and talk to Barcelona, I probably did because I love football, uh, not because they need this. Yeah. Uh, but then at the end, they understood it. And uh, by the way, we are now asking them to make a presentation 
with one of the tools we have, which is a storytelling, to present one of each football player with the storytelling and, you know, making a QR code. You know, you have these, uh, uh, these uh, yes. I think called chromes, you know, they sell chromes with the play. Put a, a QR code on the chrome so people can download the storytelling of Leo Messi. Imagine that would be great with a chatbot uh, included for Leo Messi and we'll create that sort of engagement. Of course, it's not Leo Messi answer to that chatbot. Yeah. Sure. And they, they love it, you know, they, they, they are open. That, that is great. I think they start opening to understand that they need to be quicker. In fact, they are creating digital department within the digital, the, within the marketing department. Yeah. That is good news. Uh, we are far from, you know, uh, having them really opened, uh, the biggest uh, in the enterprise, but finally, they're going to do it. Yeah. Because they are the last one doing it, because then was funny with Mercedes, because they said, you know, why don't you do that? I say, you know, if we have uh, Audi, you know, they're probably the most competitor is Audi. Until Audi takes that channel, I will never leave that channel, yeah. because even if the one percent of my sales come from that channel, I will never leave that channel or make paper. Fair enough. I understand. I'm a businessman. Okay, I don't want to leave the one percent of my. <laughs> Okay, good. But, you know, still, now, go on that, another channel that probably will be Pioneer, will be the first one, and we get some advantages to your competitor. And then they, they start to understand, uh, which, is, which, is, which is great. But big, big enterprise, a lot of anecdotes, very funny, sometimes very upsetting. But, you know, it's the role of the play. We play. This is a game. If you don't, want, if you don't like this game, just go and, you know, do something else. <laughs> that's great and you know what I, I'm so excited about what you just said there forget it forget this FC Barcelona and Lionel Messi forget that for the moment in time just use that as an example whatever business that you're in you know obviously in the football business the players are the asset or the stock or the value mm -hmm. of the balance sheet if you want to get that yeah they've got property and they've got commercial rights and sponsorship deals but, but actually the players are, the, are the, the, the commodity that go out there and make it happen um, and you can, you know, we're going to talk more about storytelling and movie tellings, or, you know, movie telling translates to video marketing, I suppose, in, uh, for, the, yeah. for the, the, but we'll talk more about that in a moment, but think about it, you know, if, if you're an FC Barcelona, a Juve, you know, Juventus fan, you know, you're a Manchester United, Everton fan, we're big Everton fans here in the UK, so uh, we've got a game tonight as well, this is recorded, Good. but we've got a game tonight, uh, but but, you know, if you're a fan, you know, football clubs, there's, it, it, it's rare you find such passion because they're not just really a business, they're a community. And people want to be close to those stars. And if you could put engaging content into the smartphone, like, like Max is saying here, player profiles, player, player ages, what his career stats are. And they can watch videos, the top five goals or top five saves or all that background there. That's such an empowering thing. So, you know, you may not be serving football clubs. You may not be a football club, but you could be something else that you, you know, where, where you've got that sort of connection with your audience and, the, 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 you know, the hungry for information uh, and, and have it in a personalized experience. So, you know, whether you're selling nuts and bolts, you know, home renovation, fast consumer moving goods, you know, or something, you know, uh, uh, Max mentioned earlier about McDonald's, you know, putting vouchers and, and new recipes and restaurants, putting those in the, in the hands. How powerful is that? You know, people aren't looking for that type of stuff online as far as going to the web. They're looking in the handset, they're scrolling social, the meeting and where they're at, you know, and whether that's Domino's Pizza on a Friday night or Domino's, you know, for here in the UK, we're big boxing fans as well, Max, and we will lot, lot of watch the matchroom boxing, the AJ fights, you know, the heavyweight stuff, the, you know, the lighter, lighter stuff. Um, and I can tell you now, every time a boxing match is on, Domino's going to overdrive. They know what time the, the Sky Sports, um, um, uh, you know, uh, boxing undercard starts, and they're hitting you on text messages. They're hitting you on social. Download this. It's not too late to get it delivered before the fight starts. They're amazing how they do it. So a big shout out to Domino's Pizza. Um, they do an amazing job. And they, they, they time their campaigns really, really well in line with either sporting events or staying events where obviously a pizza complements you know, that experience. And ultimately being able to put that into the handset 
is, is, is you know, there and then is just a tremendous asset. So, uh, yeah, I don't know if you do much with restaurants or fast food stuff or anything like that, Max, but that's certainly something that, you know, I see with Domino's and how well that they do it. Yeah, we do restaurants. We have a chain restaurant using the conversion marketing system, which is, you know, uh, it's, it's appealing for, for all businesses, basically. Yeah. All business again have the consumers. The consumers stay there, so uh, we are again at the same at the same level as before. Perfect. Well, thanks for about that bio. A couple more points. Max is a member of several board of directors of technological startups. Um, he's, you know, obviously international, as he's mentioned there across the globe, working in the states and France, in the UK. Um, so, you know. Ultimately, it's brought us up to that sort of uh, history and that journey today, um, you know, of operating this model that adapts to market trends and consumer needs, which is conversion marketing. So let's buckle up and let's get into a little bit more detail. Um, I hope you find some interesting sort of backstories there. And uh, the reason why I've taken time to do that is because for a lot of things that are new to the market, Max mentioned it earlier, it's about not, I don't want really to use the word selling here, but it's about educating people that they need to change before actually they have to change. Um, and ultimately, you know, I think, you know, we've tried to cover that a little bit more, that there is a need to get mobile focus in whatever format, whether that's with this type of solution, what Max delivers or, you know, uh, you know, other sort of people out there. But mobile marketing in its simplest form, Max, sounds simple. But there is so much more to mobile marketing. Yeah. Tell us a little bit more about the fantastic power. I know we've touched on it previously, but let's build on that. Tell us a little bit more about the fantastic power uh, and why it's essential now for today's modern buyer. So just, just share us your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, mobile, the mobile marketing today, uh, it's, uh, it's need to be said, before the mobile was, uh, uh, was a part of the digital marketing, today the digital marketing is included on the mobile. I mean, you cannot swap one from another. You know, you have the app, uh, open mobile, open open uh, source, pay, uh, open source uh, contents, and then lead a part of the digital. Today is the digital moving into the mobile. Uh, that's again because it's in everybody's hands. Uh, but you know, mobile uh, is not everything. Wow, this is a fantastic! Is the solution of the world? Uh, you know, you need it to know how to use it. Mm -hmm. so we have to take in a, always in consideration trends, numbers, figures, spam attention, eight second, eight to ten second. So when you go to mobile, uh, you need to be fresh, you need to be quick, you need to be attractive. People don't read on mobile, beautiful photo, little text, uh, engagement to make them uh, take an action. So uh, it's not just, wow, you know, everything to, today is easy to talk about mobile marketing and seems like, hey, it's the solution to the world. Uh, we are very far from that, uh, from that, you know, I like everything else needs to be understood. Uh, we're not saying here today, hey, do mobile marketing and your company is going to grow. Uh, you know, if your message is not good, if your consumer is not engaged, are you going to, you know, you're going to have a bad results. Probably you're going to realize it's quicker uh, because the mobile, it's, you know, everything goes on the mobile. It's very quick. Yes. Yeah. An SMS campaign, you know, an SMS campaign, you do SMS campaign within the two, three hours, you know, the results. No one opened the SMS 24 hours later. I mean, it's very rare. It's impactful, yeah. It's very tactical, yeah, isn't yeah, it? Because you know, it drops out on your mobile, you click. If you don't click on the link, uh, probably you would never do. So, yeah. it's, uh, you know, it, it needs to be understood. It's a completely uh, uh, things that need to be done because, uh, again, consumer is willing to receive this. Uh, I think... Uh, everything, also everything changed with mobile marketing with, uh, in 2007 uh, with, uh, with, uh, with the social network. Yeah, now, absolutely. Before the 2007, before the social network or the, or the creation of the smartphone, uh, the trends were led by companies. You know, they, they decided something, they put it in radio, television, the press, everybody had to do that. Today is different. Today is the consumer leading, that's why we call consumer actor, we're leading the changes. Companies should be uh, adapting to what we're looking for. And so yeah. that the mobile is very, uh, talking about mobile marketing in that space, it's very important, Mike. Yeah. Uh, because again, it takes, uh, takes the, consumer, the consumer on the first place. Is, is him that decided, he, he decided when to do it, how to do it, what to do it. So we need to be there 
We, as a company, we need to be there. We need to be present. And we, and, and, we meet, and we need to be ready as the consumer wants to be. So to do mobile marketing, it's very important to understand your audience, uh, to understand the way they engage to you. Uh, because if they engage, then you can divide that engagement. You can communicate to a group of audience that have the same engagement. Uh, mobile marketing is definitely, of course, the, the, uh, the, 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 the type of marketing you want to look at. Yeah. Um, I think what's interesting, Max, is there's a couple of things you said there. You know, if, if your message is poor, if, you, if your content's not fresh. So, you know, this, just to be clear, guys, this is not a quick win, that, as Max says there. You've still got to do the basics right. You've still got to get your strategy right. You've still got to get your value proper, proposition right. Um, you've still got to get that, you know, unique sort of differences. This is a, you know, it's more than a delivery system, but, but ultimately, you know, you, you know, it's not as, hey, I can, I can skip my message. I can skip my, you know, striking images or skip the need to record videos, you know, or audio. You still got to do that. Um, but it's just about putting that in a place that is, you know, you know, that, that converges into the handset of, of, of where they are, if that makes sense. Uh, so let's get the basics right. Don't, don't overskip those. Uh, otherwise, you know, it doesn't matter what delivery mechanism or what area you're going to put it. You put a bad message on a billboard, you put a bad message on a Super Bowl ad, it's going to bomb, you know, and, uh, you know, you, you, you've got to be aware of that. But no, that's a great overview, Max, on that. I appreciate it. And, you know, you mentioned there on 2007 about the social networks and the introduction of the smartphone. I mean, ultimately, I don't even know why they still call them phones because it's more like a computer in your handset, in your pocket these days. Uh, but, um, you know, the power of social networks in the smartphone provides brands with tremendous opportunities. You know, um, you know, tell us a little bit more about how converging marketing maximizes social networks, if you could, Max, please. I mean, for the um, today, the audience uh, is on the is a, we, we. I mean, as a marketeers, uh, we should understand, the, you know, different passage. The first one is where is my where is my audience? Yeah. Uh, how, how can I get my audience? What is, is the the you know before it was easier television, radio, press. You put it there. You know the time people are uh, are sitting in front of the television or use yeah. a radio or stuff. So it's easier today. Uh, the audience, four billion people per, per day, you know, four billion people stays on the mobile, on the social every day. So uh, social is the, the place where we entertain the most today, where we are more willing to receive information. Uh, and in fact, you know, probably some of the listeners, they can, they can agree with this. Uh, it depends what sort of advertising you're doing that is working better in the social network than Google. Uh, because social network looks for you, uh, Google, you should go and look for that. So yeah. it's, 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 uh, it's a quite different, but the social network, the power of the social networks is it's enormous. Let's yeah. imagine Instagram, you know, let's put some da uh, data and figures. 2017, 400 million stories on Instagram, 2018, over a billion. Wow. 2018, we don't know yet, it's going to be three, four billions. I mean, how is us pushing, it's, it's enormous. Uh, you have an, all the social networks, Facebook, Twitter, uh, Instagram, LinkedIn. Uh, they're all growing step by step. They're growing. People take the time to, you know, to, 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 to work on this social. I mean, we, you know, advocate a new job, influencers. You know, five years ago, you had influencers. Today, probably the best marketing uh, you can do is... Uh, get with an influencer that talks about your product, boom, your product is probably two, three, four millions of people, you know, right? You see uh, it all the time on YouTube channels and uh, oh, yeah. they're, they're, the, they're the boys and girls out there who are, are really making that happen and I get it, I understand it. Really. Yeah, so, I mean, it's good. And again, you know, looking at looking us, I, mean, uh, I, I, I don't have Facebook myself uh, because it's too much, too hard work for me. But <laughs> yeah, I have a LinkedIn, I've been, I've been on LinkedIn for the last 14 years. I have an Instagram, and that's for me is enough. Uh, and, uh, you know, I spend time in there because if you've been there, you have to be in a set of time, in a set of way, especially for us professionals that, you know, we want uh, to deliver uh, an idea of what we do, uh, the passion we have for our job. I mean, for me, there's no place on the social network for my personal life. Uh, oh, yes, I have it, but it's not my name. It's a name that all of my friends knows. Uh, 
and uh, that's the way I communicate to them. But anyway, uh, taking back that to the business, uh, today's vital. You know, uh, I, uh, probably the next web page uh, will be uh, a profile on one of the uh, social network pages with a virtual system that will ask you what you want. You know, le- less every time less we go on a web page and looking for that company, what they do, we don't read. I mean, okay, let's put it another way. I read. I have books. I love books. Uh, but, you know, reading a web page, what they do, uh, it's, it's, we don't have that time. Yeah. We don't have that time. Let's be quick. We need to be uh, straight on the point what we want to do. And you want to do something, put on, a, put on a call to action on it. And somebody, if they're interested, they will contact you. Yeah. But, for example, in China, get into the, this uh, you already have web pages that have no text. They're just uh, uh, a virtual system. Yeah. That's there asking you what you want. Uh, this is the product. You can buy the product now. There's no text. Just it's a, uh, it's a communication human to machine, H to M in this case. Yeah. I was a good friend of mine, Simon, he works for Microsoft and he, we, were, we were speaking a couple of weeks ago. We went out for, 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 t- uh, for dinner in, in the evening. And um, he was talking about voice recognition and, and all that, you know, how it sets the schedule in Microsoft and things like that, and yeah. the voice technology and that assistant stuff. That's, that's amazing. And it is, it's a big part for sure. So, when we, you mentioned a couple earlier in the show, Max, you mentioned about AI, artificial intelligence. We've all heard about that. Okay. But just talk to me a little bit more how artificial intelligence is playing a part in the convergent marketing and how it impacts you know benefits for people using that yeah that is another big item artificial intelligence today talks about artificial intelligence uh, trending topping where everywhere uh, so yeah uh, but we are we use part of the artificial intelligence for us artificial intelligence is important to understand uh, in the process of nurturing uh, how each customer is engaged with the brand. We, yeah. have, a, we have a product called, uh, we have a solution called uh, Lead Scoring that yeah. based on the 40 points, um, we understand how the consumer engaged with the communication we sell. So in base a set of uh, action they do, like clicking, filling, time spent on a, on a landing page, uh, time spent on a chatbot, we understand that, uh, we give them a score uh, on behavior, we give them a score on uh, on, on demographic. So yeah. we divide the database uh, different clusters of people, the same audience. They have the same, let's say, uh, engagement with that brand, and that allows us to go and take them and give them uh, give them the right communication and uh, exactly the communication about they are engaged to that brand. For example, if you have a consumer. Or if you have in a database, a consumer that is engaged, uh, is uh, answering to our, reading our newsletter, uh, participating to our, our promotion, we understand that is an engaged one. So yeah. we understand that this customer probably uh, in no time is going to buy us. Uh, so we, we, we don't bother him with a, uh, like a, a big promotion or very aggressive promotion. He doesn't need that. So that is the first point. Then we have a, a little a more pieces and bits uh, on the platform. One we, we want to use now, we are working with, is predictive content. Yeah. So great. We, we have a database of many uh, customers using contents. So the idea that the machine will understand what the content is working better in, in certain type of communication, and we probably give you some tips. Hey, listen, this, com- this content converts this percent in the campaign of promotion, of uh, uh, engaging, uh, you know, it depends exactly also where you are in. So artificial intelligence is very important in marketing today, especially for us to understand how the consumer is engaging uh, and how the, the brand are, you know, how we can improve the content they're using. Yeah, it's amazing. I mean, what I love about this convergent marketing AI side is, you know, like you say, the lead score inside, you see how they're engaging, what times, days, all that type of stuff that we're looking at in there. And, it, you know, as, as, you know, we talked earlier about the data. 
Um, it's just allowing us when, when, you know, I talked earlier about how Domino's marketers prior to yeah. Boxing Day. Uh, it's a similar situation, you know, when you'll start to pick up trends and see where the heat maps are and whether they're more or less engaged. And I, I made a note of it here, Max. I love it that if you've got a really highly engaged person who's engaging, clicking on content, really, you don't have to go and hit them over the head with a cheap offer. You know, ultimately, you're going to get them up to brand advocacy. You're going to be great prospects and customers, and you can just nurture them over time. So so you can you can you know you can use the machine learning, the artificial intelligence to start to select what campaigns, and of course segment them into different lists, and then start to sort of feed them relevant content. Because again, even if you get the basics right, like we talked about earlier, you get the basics right, your message is good. But if you're sending it at the wrong time, or you're sending the wrong stuff to the right people, it's you know you're going to start getting a lower return. So being able to have that intelligence from the artificial sort of machine learning, which allows you to put the right message in front of the right audience at the right time, is really going to start to ramp up your results. So I appreciate you sharing that insight with us, uh, Max. And you know we talk about those, and again we, we touched on this in the bio side of it at the top of the show, that integrated piece where you know you said, hey, we've got this over here and this over here, and they're all great tools. Um, but, you know, the power of having that augmented solution, that integrated mobile solution in 2019 and beyond, why is that a must for any serious marketer? You know, what are the benefits of going that way, Max? Well, the benefit is uh, maximize time mm -hmm. uh, because, of course, you have only one. You don't have to go out and in uh, looking for the links you create in, the sum, in, in one of these uh, other platforms, uh, you know, make it really easy uh, the, the work you're doing. Uh, one other aspect, very important, we, we discovered with agencies, especially agencies using, uh, using other uh, program, uh, I'm not going to do names, but you know, uh, they comp they're more complex program. And whenever you have to manage a client, uh, you need a, a, an account manager for that client. Uh, using a simple yeah. platform integrated, you can use an account manager for two, three, four clients. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, it's maximize time and money. Uh, one another thing is important is what I call an IKEA effect. <laughs> so uh, yeah. When you go to IKEA and you want to buy a plate, you come out in a plate, a set of plate would cost uh, eight, 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 eight pounds, for example. I don't know whatever it would cost. I never, I don't go there. I hate that plate. <laughs> yeah, so awesome. Let's go to IKEA and say, listen, this is the credit card. Buy all of it. <laughs> it's, so the IKEA, you go there to buy plates, you come out with a, uh, with the glasses, with the forks, with so you spend 300 euros uh, out of eight. And so when you go and buy different, you know, different softwares, yeah. uh, you know, you soft oh, is 99 per month. Oh, it's 29 per month. Oh, it's a uh, 79 per month. Yeah, that at the end of the month makes like 400, 500, 600 pounds. People, uh, people miss how much that the cost. We call it in the stack. When you add up all the stack, it can, you know, and all the things. One more, one more. So that is, you know, it's even. Uh, is uh, is uh, is uh, maximizing costs because when you get it all together, it's one cost. It's cost per year. You have it. It's there. You don't have to buy nothing else. You know, especially doing conversion marketing. Of course, if you want to do something else, probably you need another software. But this is the main point: maximize time, maximize uh, money. Of course, the, the spend the, the money you spend on the tool. Because again, uh, even if you're not entrepreneur and you are a marketing manager, I'm sure that if you have a CEO like me, uh, I not only would ask you results on the campaign, but also what is the margin, what we're spending, you know. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we have to be very careful. So as a marketing manager, you probably would be or listening to this show uh, with Mike, uh, you have to be careful of what you're spending, not also yeah. the results you have, but hey, how much you're spending. That's just very Absolutely. Yeah, great point. So I, I appreciate that. So. We've talked about emotion. People buy from emotion. Um, that, that's clear. We get that. We need to sort of build that value. Um, the emotional content in today's modern buyer is a must. Um, you know, we're knowing convergent marketing, we use mobile video campaigns. We use mobile storytelling linked to AMP, you know, the accelerated mobile landing pages. Um, but just talk to us a little bit more about how engaging content through storytelling, through video marketing, movie telling, you know, influence people's interests and events that buy. Because, you know, I know just getting a flat, cold, black and white email is not very engaging. Getting a lovely video into your handset, that, you know, whether it's Leo Messi and FC Barcelona or somebody else, you know, you can work it out yourself. But I'd just love to get your view on it. 
it, you know, for businesses who are going to adopt convergent marketing with story and movie telling, what can they expect from an emotion and increased engagement? You know, what will their customers going to benefit from? Yeah, exactly. I mean, uh, you, you say it all on the question. I mean, when you, uh, today you, you cannot engage with a cold email or, or text. Uh, in general, people don't read on the internet. Don't read, they don't have time, especially on the mobile. It's impossible. We don't have time because as you rightly said, you're in a restaurant, you pick your phone and you, you know, while you're eating with your, your girlfriend or whatever, your family, that's so rude, but we all do that, unfortunately. Uh, and so you don't have that, that spam attention is very, is very short. Uh, but even that, I mean, to engage the customer with uh, an emotional content, you also need to understand how your customer is engaged with you. Uh, and again, but if it's like, for example, let's put an idea of a car. You know, let me say, I want to sell a car. I want people to know about this car. Uh, if you put like a beautiful photo of that car, steady photo of that car, uh, you know, it's, and you put that, oh, this is the car of your dream. Please fill in this form. I will uh, get a free discount, whatever it is, and uh, contact us. I mean, you are not creating n no emotion. No. You know, I always remember when I was a young kid, I was a well, young kid, 15, 16. I was not a kid, young. Um, I went with my family, uh, with my mom and dad, buying a sofa. <laughs> and we went this, uh, to Natuzzi, uh, which is a Divani Divani. No, Natuzzi is an international company. And I remember getting there, it was not buying a sofa, it, it was an experience. You know, the, I don't know if you've ever been there. Now, they probably all do the same. They create an apps. You know, we were walking through the path, uh, staying there, sitting on the sofa. You had the television in front. You had the uh, lamps. You know, it was, they recreated the living room. Yeah. That's the way you would enjoy the, the city. Yeah. That sofa looked beautiful. When we put it in our house, it looked a shit. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God, it's not, it doesn't look at the same sofa. Because they sell an experience. You know, yeah. they, they didn't sell the sofa itself. They were, hey, look how beautiful, look how beautiful you're going to be looking at television. Yeah. Of course, they had like a huge uh, television. We had a little television. <laughs> so it doesn't make the same game. And again, now you want to sell, a, you want to you wanna somebody know about your car. You know, I would like a, a tell them a story. You know, tell them a story about this car. Look how beautiful it is. Because, you know, I love cars. I have, have an Audi, uh, you know, I love cars, I love it. And when I buy a car, I don't buy the car, whatever cares, you know. Now Mercedes, Audi, whatever, they're all good. But what I like to, um, to receive is like, okay, what is the steering wheel look like? You know, what is the, the radio look like? What does the interior look like? What is the chair of the seats I'm gonna sit on? You know, and telling that story, hey, look, this is your car. It's not a car. This is where you're gonna sit and drive and enjoy for the rest of your day, whenever you take the car for yeah. 20 minutes, an hour, or whatever. Even in a traffic that everybody's not happy, you're going to love that experience. Yeah. And then telling that by a tool called storytelling, that is a swappable effect. Uh, and at the end, the call to action, you know, click on the car, you know, get it. Test drive or download a brochure or whatever it could be. Then if you don't make as a video marketing, as you call the movie telling, video marketing is even better. Because we, the, the brains, you know, remembers music, video, and, you know, it's, it, I'm not going to hear to discover why video engages more than text. <laughs> it just does. <laughs> uh, we all know that. But, you know, I didn't recreate that on the mobile experience, uh, you know, vertical. Because if you turn the mobile, no one turns the mobile anyway. So that vertical experience, click, you know, click on, the, on, the, on some sort of advertising on Facebook, on LinkedIn, wherever, and you have this swipe effect of what you can get at that moment, that is key point. Because we even study of what pages they will probably click. Yeah. And we understand that, okay, and this is something you take in the phone. That is another thing we taught. Whatever I, I, I click, I get something, I love it, I have to be able to download to my phone or to take that and deliver it to my friend. Yeah. For example, uh, if I know you love, you love football or you love cars and I receive a, a deal by cars, beautiful car, whatever the deal, I would pay, share, I would it. Out, share it, go to Facebook or go to WhatsApp, send it to Mike. Hey, Mike, look how beautiful is this. Yeah. The power of sharing today, it's enormous. It's yeah. enormous. So again, 
engaging those customers with this emotional content, really lead the text, the photo that really represent what you want to do. Because again, you know, I receive campaigns sometimes, <laughs> it's funny. You know, it's laughing to me, it's funny. You know, and probably people listening, you can, you can talk about that on the hashtag open the mic. Mm. Uh, you know, you start advertising about restaurant and I don't know why they all do the same. They send this beautiful photo of the <laughs> empty restaurant. How the hell do you think I'm gonna eat in an empty restaurant? But because they show you how big, how big is this, uh, the, the living, you know, the, the restaurant with the chair all put in there, set nice, beautiful photo. You know, they probably cleaned everything. Man, restaurant need to put the people down. What do you say? You sell a food, put a photo of a nice plate. Put a photo of somebody enjoying eating that plate. Put and it could be a video, Max, that couldn't it? Of the restaurant, the conversation and the food and the wines flowing and that's what's going to engage them. Yeah, but exactly. That's what I want to go uh, you know, none of empty restaurant. And every time I see the photo of, of advertising empty restaurant, I get, I'm like, why are they doing so? You know, <laughs> are you going to ever eat in a empty restaurant? No, you don't. Gotcha. When you walk in the street, you pop by a restaurant, you see it's empty, you don't go there, you just don't walk. No, it's, it's great, it's great. That's a real story. There's, there's, there's a section in there in lots of marketing uh, sort of uh, courses that you may have taken. And what do you do? You, you arrive into town, you drive into town, you, you're totally new and you, you're, ready for, you're ready to eat, uh, you know, before you maybe check into your hotel. And, and you're going down the strip and you see all these restaurants and there's nobody in that one, there's nobody in that one. There's lots of cars in this one. Where do you pull in? You pull into the one that's busy with the cars and whatever, even if you've got to wait, because there's a fear of saying, oh, I don't really want to go in there. So you go to the hot spots, and you're absolutely right. So if yeah. you're a strum tour, hopefully that's you know a little bit of an education, a wake-up call for you. Start sort of showing engaging and, you know, your clients enjoying your food or, or whatever it would be, uh, and, and I get it. But great story. I love it. I love it. Thanks for sharing. No so, think about what we've covered here today, guys. Um, I think, you know, we don't need to educate you that the mobile is the future. You, you know that yourself because of your activities and your behavior as how you respond. I think that's a given. Um, you, we don't really need to educate you about putting valuable, relevant content out there. But what you do need to think is, think about how mobile and how committed you are to driving mobile and putting your message, engaging content to really get people excited about your brand, meeting them where they are. And ultimately, like I say, maybe a little bit crude and direct, but ultimately, put your message where their eyeballs are. It's as simple as that. And their eyeballs are in the mobile. Um, so Max, absolute tremendous value today. Thank you so much. It's an absolute pleasure uh, to, to learn from you and tap into your knowledge on, on the story of how convergent marketing and the awesome stuff that you're doing. And we're so, soon to be ho helping you do it, Ada, as well. Uh, that's amazing. So if we could sort of sum up, and I know there's so much, you know, um, you know, so many things we've covered. But if you could sum up convergent marketing and what people should be thinking about to get started with it, in sort of three short tips, uh, what would those be? Get get close to the audience. That's yeah. the first thing. I mean, whatever marketing you do, you have to get close to the audience. Approach them with emotional content uh, and experience, uh, frictional experience, and finally feed them according to the engagement to your brand. That's but, awesome. Of the three points, main points to the so, so get close to them, give them emotional content, and then sort of feed them with that engagement that's going to bubble them up to either share or buy or, get, or, or make an inquiry. I mean, we, we probably have all the same. You know, uh, when, when I get some salespeople on board, I always ask, this is the first question I ask, how long does it last for your lead? Um, and it's, it's funny that the answer, you know, oh, to me it's a month, three months, four months, one year. Uh, the answer is, leads last forever yeah you know, whatever it does it take i don't care somebody get interested in my business i will always feed him yeah. and he doesn't decide to unsubscribe really and by in three years i, I don't want to go away in three years time so <laughs> that is important feed them engage them make them understand you don't want them just because you want the money you want them because their product fits exactly to them
Yeah, and you're selling a solution because, you know, ultimately, and again, for the listeners here, people don't buy what you sell, they buy the result that it gets them or the experience around that, ex- you know, that. Engagement. Exactly. So that's fine. As Max, it's been an absolute pleasure. Um, pleasure, Mike. I want to learn more. Uh, please, please, please connect with Max on LinkedIn. Um, you know, we'll put those uh, uh, links below in the show notes below. If you want to, if you don't want to wait um, too long to find out more, head over to adaoncloud.com. So that's the usual www. So then adaoncloud.com. You can learn all the amazing stuff out there. And also, it's very, very rare. I mean, I think we're well over 50 podcasts now or, or approaching 50 podcasts on the open mic. It's very rare that I do a pitch. Uh, I don't, I, you know, I see this more of a personal service. But uh, keep an eye on the success of Dalio as well. There's going to be a full convergent marketing section on our website there uh, as we partner and, and increase our partnership and strength with Ada and Max's team. Uh, we're super excited about it. I know Max is excited about it. We're going to really help, you know, um, you know, you understand and we'll be changing our content strategies to incorporate. And we're going to still be pushing out the amazing stuff that HubSpot and Inbound do. That's a given. But we're going to be bringing in and we're changing. And if we're changing as a leading agency, the software companies are changing as leading software developers. Isn't it about time you as consumers, business owners change and get with the mobile revolution? So Max, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thanks for being on the show today. My pleasure, Mike. Thank you very much to you. to invited me. It's been a pleasure. Very funny. Very nice. <laughs> Fantastic. So I will send it to you, all your listeners. And uh, I'm one of the listeners of Open the Mic. I was very, find very interesting. If I can fo- follow live, I always go to find some uh, nice tips. Thank you very much, Mike. You do a great job. Thank you very much indeed. And for the listeners, we appreciate you tuning into this episode and continuing your growth engine journey. As always, to make sure that you're getting the game, you've got to go out there, go do the hustle, go make it happen, and we're going to catch up with you on another Open Mic podcast real soon. Take care. Have a great week. You have been listening to The Open Mic. Brought to you by The Success Hub. To find out more and to get the resources we have mentioned in this podcast episode, simply visit blog.thesuccesshub.io and view the podcast section. Thanks for listening and we look forward to catching up with you in our next episode. This podcast and associated materials is published under copyright to The Success Hub. All rights reserved. No reproduction of this material is permitted.